I want to talk about blood components <coughs> and specifically white blood cells. White blood cells, just for a few minutes. Uh, when I was in chiropractic school at Palmer College back in the 90s, I think I went to some Irene Gold seminars to learn how to get ready for my board exams. And I think one of the things that they taught us was this. They said 60, 30, 8, 2, 0. Oh, never let my engine blow. And you're going to help me look at this in just a minute. But 60 refer 60% 60 of the white blood cells are neutrophils. And these are the white blood cells, they're called SEGs, polymorphonucleosides, and they are your first line of defense in the blood. They're not very they're not very picky. If something looks bad, they just start shooting. Not not literally, but, but that's that's how they roll. Let would be lymphocytes. There are a couple of different kinds of lymphocytes, and there is a B lymphocyte that gets processed through bone marrow. That's the one that makes your antibodies. And then there are T lymphocytes that get processed through your thymus, and these are the one that, ones that produce cytotoxic Ts, helper Ts, suppressor Ts. These are part of your, your humoral immune system, uh, cell-mediated, excuse me, cell-mediated immune system. These are the ones that they're like terminators. Uh, especially the cytotoxic T's, they will, they will have the profile presented to them by the monocyte, which by the way, transforms into a macrophage. When it eats a bad critter or a bad bacterium virus, it'll present this information to the lymphocyte and that's what gives the, lymph the T lymphocyte specifically the information to go attack a specific invader. Engine is eosinophil. I learned that eosinophils are elevated in, excuse me, worms, wheezes, and weird diseases. So parasitic infection, asthma is wheezes and weird diseases. And I'm not gonna really comment about weird diseases because I don't wanna do that on YouTube, but uh, but that's what we associate with eosinophils, and the last one is basophil. Basophils are elevated with allergic reactions. So whenever you have allergies in your body, you might have an elevated basophil count. So I want you to look on these charts and tell me, what is the percent listed in your book for neutrophil? 54 to 62. 54 to 62, so 60 hits right kind of in the middle of it. What about lymphocytes? 25 to 33, and we got 30, right? And what about monocytes? 3 to 9. 3 to 9, that's kind of the upper edge of it, okay. What about eosinophils? 1 to 3. 1 to 3, and I got 2, and then what about basophils? Less than 1, which I got 0. Okay, so that is a basic identification of the white blood cells. Remember that you also have platelets. They're not part of, they're not white blood cells, but they come from a cell called a megakaryocyte. And then of course, we have just talked about it a minute ago, erythrocytes are the red blood cells. And they are the main components of your blood that carry oxygen and carbon dioxide back and forth. And then as well in the blood there is the plasma which is where a lot of electrolytes and proteins, albumins are carried. The, the albumins are very important and we, I don't know if I'm going to do another uh, segment on this, but I will just say right now that the, the blood proteins are important. Listen close. As blood goes through your body, you might think in your head, or I might think, how come it never, the blood vessels never get empty? You know, like especially down, if we go from an artery to an arterial down to a capillary, how come they just don't run dry? Well, the reason is, is that there are proteins in the blood and the proteins create an osmotic pressure, a sucking pressure back to the blood. So the bloody, blood is always pulling some water back in and it thus keeps the 
blood from losing all the water. That's a pretty cool deal. And then some of the some of the proteins are uh, have to do with immune system, especially the gamma globulins do. I think that that's what I wanted to talk about on this set.